r slash ask reddit what's the dumbest thing you did as a kid it was a hot summer day and my family was all out together doing yard work i was too young to really be much help so i got sent inside to get water for everyone i wanted the water to be really cold and refreshing for everyone so i loaded up the glasses with both ice and water but then my young scientific mind kicked in i knew that the water got colder as the ice melted I also knew from my prior scientific experimentation that microwaving ice would make it melt faster. So I put the glasses of ice water in the microwave it would chill the water quicker. So that is what I did. It didn't work. Testing the water after the microwave had melted all the ice did not result in the expected outcome of colder water. So I added more ice and microwaved the again. And again. And again. An hour later my dad, concerned I'd never sum back, came looking for me. He found me on the floor in the kitchen bawling because I was letting my family down by not being able to get the water nice and cold. Later on in life I decided not to pursue my passion for science as a career. Pooped my pants in the family van while my mom ran into a store quick. Then proceeded to try and MacGyver said turd out of my undies thinking I could hide the evidence before she got back. I was unsuccessful. Put my tongue inside a motorized toy on Christmas morning. My brother and I took a garden tractor trailer and attached it to an antique baby buggy stroller, then proceeded to push it over the biggest hill in our neighborhood. What a ride. We forgot brakes. I was in first grade. There was a little girl who I fancied. We were playing cops and robbers. And eventually we're underneath of a table sitting Indian style. I saw her hands and the tips of her fingers were crooked from arthritis. I didn't understand this at the time. It looked as though the tips of her fingers were bent down. I said why are your fingers bent down? She said they're just that way. I said, I can straighten them. And without much thought, I excitedly took her hand and proceeded to break her index finger. With a very quick tug, the finger was straight. She teared up but didn't cry. The next day, her finger was in a splint. I ran into her years later in a bar. She showed me her one straight finger. I felt awful in having the full understanding of what I had done. In the back of my mind I thought I did deliver on making her one finger straight. And she had become a doctor. Staring at the sun. If I stared long enough, I thought I could see the surface. I wear glasses now. Climbed on top of the bookcase wearing Mike Wazowski swimming flippers and jumping down. It is truly incredible I have two functional ankles. Being curious about death. A neighborhood cat had been ran over in a busy street slash highway type. People driving on that street would plow through. One day I took it upon myself to see what it felt like to be dead and what would happen afterward. I was about to run into traffic when my friend came out and asked what I was doing. If it weren't for them I don't think I'd be here. I was five. One day I played basketball in low top vans in high school went up for a layup and came down at the wrong angle. Dislocated my entire right foot. Luckily it popped back into position by itself. Always support your ankles when playing sports. Steal my mom's van and crash it when I was in the fifth grade. When I was three or four I managed to stick a pair of rubber gloves in the toaster oven and turned it on to see what would happen. I nearly burned our kitchen down but my pregnant mother waddled into the kitchen and promptly chucked the flaming toaster oven into the backyard. The stress from this whole ordeal sent my mom into labor later that evening. A few hours later and my sister was born. Grow. Up. Pete in my school uniform. Go back home. Told my mom that my uniform is wet but was afraid that I'd be scolded if I tell her that I peed in my uniform so I just told her that it's water. And just dried it just like that. So it was never known. Haha. <laughs> but I don't feel like it's dirty. 
it's just water. Make my AOL username Lil Miskissable 51. This was before I even kissed. That's how innocent my mind was. I waited until after high school to lose my virginity, but now I can see why everyone thought I was promiscuous back then. Maybe it's because I had extremely strict parents and I wanted to rebel a little. A friend and I played chicken with oncoming cars. I think we were maybe 7 or 8. We would take turns standing in the road, making faces and sticking out our tongues at oncoming cars, and jumping out of the way in the nick of time. Thank goodness an older neighborhood boy saw us and took us home, and told us to never do it again. The scary thing is, I don't remember any of the cars stopping to scold us or even slowing down. Trying to put a tag on a water tower that was behind a very tall fence with guard dogs. We basically suspended ourselves by rope we stole, and were trying to swing ourselves from one tower to the other. Catching a ride on a truck while on my rollerblades, holding the rear bumper, truck started to accelerate, I couldn't keep up, fell down and busted my knees. I still remember the feeling of the doctor cleaning the open wound. That was pretty stupid. Playing with fire in a grassy field in the hot summer season. There are many. But one of the most stupid was getting a running start and jumping over about a four foot tall brick wall on a local college campus without knowing what lay on the other side. Unfortunately, it was about a 12 foot drop. Luckily the ground was wet and soggy on the other side and I landed with my body weight distributed across most of my body. So I suffered no injuries beyond those to my ego. Picked up broken glass from a parking lot because I thought it was crystals. Took a joyride on my dad's riding lawnmower. I floored it and panicked. Almost hitting a parked car. He too panicked and chased me around the yard. The neighbors were laughing, but I was scared AF. I ate half a slug. Definitely shoving a rock up my nose just to get it out and made sure it fit on the other nostril. Touched my tongue to a steel pole in the dead of winter. Yup. Just like the scene from A Christmas Story. Tried to make a zipline from the back porch to the tree with a rope. Almost successful, but I fell and my back hit the corner of the cement porch and knocked the wind out of me. It's no wonder I have back problems now. I took a plastic oversized baseball bat to a garage window, because I liked the thump sound. Well, at least until thump turned into shatter. Older brother talked me into peeing on a light socket in a Wendy's restroom when I was little. I got extremely lucky I wasn't electrocuted. Smoke came pouring out of it while I did it. I think the only thing that saved me is that the stream wasn't continuous, so maybe the electricity wasn't able to travel up it to my body. Also, pooped my pants once when I was around preschool age. When my parents found out, I was embarrassed and tried to blame it on my brother, the idea being that my older, but also still young, brother somehow secretly left school, came all the way home without anyone noticing, pooped in my pants, put them back on me, and snuck back out all the way to school, and finished his day. I don't think they believed me. I was about six years old and my friend and I decided to play hide and seek. My mom had just got a new car. In this car you were able to access the trunk behind the back seat. It was a new car so I thought it would be a great hiding spot. I climbed in and accidentally locked myself in. My friend ended up just leaving because his mom picked him up and he told nobody that I was hiding. After literally two hours of screaming a neighbor finally heard me, and my mom came to get me out. I thought I was gonna die that day. My dad would buy fireworks every time he had to go into Indiana for work since they are illegal in Illinois and would keep them hidden in the small office slash workshop in our garage. Well as kids do I found them when I was poking around looking for a toy sword he took away from me and thought that lighting one sparkler would be fine. Well I lit it and the handle part got really hot really quick so I dropped it while still sparking right into the bag with all the other fireworks in it. 
Thankfully there were no huge ones, just things like bottle rockets and roman candles and one or two of those 10 shot things. Well they all got lit by the sparkler and I ran out of the garage in time to watch as they all started to go off. Somehow the garage didn't burn down and all that was really left from all the explosions was a scorched patch of concrete and a semi-melted stool lid. I tried to cover it up but as soon as my parents got home they noticed the smell in the garage and the burn mark on the floor and then the neighbor came over to tell them what they saw happen. It was a few years after that incident that we were allowed to get fireworks again. I pretended I was sick to stay home from school. I went to my father's workshop and picked the lock to his dangerous cabinet. It was filled with fireworks, chemicals, shells, mortar tubes, and mortar casings. I spent the next several hours making charges and blowing up old tree stumps way out in the woods. While I was out there, I found a wasp nest the size of a beach ball. I took the pool skimmer pole, wrapped duct tape over the end and stuck a lit charge to the tape. I lanced it into the nest and pulled so the charge would stay in the nest and I could run back with the pole. I didn't make it 20 feet when the nest exploded and large chunks hit me. The wasps weren't all dead either. I got stung countless times. At least I wore safety goggles. Worth noting, my father had a license for building fireworks displays as a side hobby. He did smaller shows for venues and cookouts. Stand on a wheelie bin in a pair of roller blades. Used a dead guy's credit card. Ate battery acid. Went down the stairs on my gymnastics mat in Ohio and broke my arm. Put both hands on the burn barrel to see what it would feel like, while it was burning. But hey, I got to sleep with my mom on the sofa bed. Lit a forest on fire causing two neighboring schools to evacuate. I was panicking, as I ran out of the forest I thought no one would know I was responsible until I saw my whole school situated on top of the hill looking at the black clouds of smoke that filled the sky. I continued my sprint of shame up the hill where my classmates were shouting what happened. I ignored, and ran straight to class to get my belongings, I was ready to go home. Intercepted. I was confronted by the deputy head principal and was given three weeks community service. I will never forget when I had to apologize at the assembly of my former middle school which had to evacuate during the fire, most of the students knew me because I was former student but I also built quite a popular kid reputation on the app musically at the time. From that day onwards, I've become a new man. Not only in my mind but also others, forever the kid who burnt down the school forest, and if you're wondering what I was doing down there alone in the first place, I was smoking a blunt. Yes, I was embarrassed, scared, worried, and high off my ass. Bidding family in Memphis and great grandpa takes leaves into a pile. While he walked in to get a trash bag I climbed in the roof and jumped off thinking pile would break fall. That was the first time I felt getting the wind knocked out of me. My brother and I played Is There a God almost every day. This included hiking to the top of hills and jumping off, or riding our bikes off of cliffs, putting forks in outlets, climbing any tree to jump from, leaping into any body of water without question and of course, playing with asbestos, just to see what would happen. We should not be here. I woke up to go pee. Misremembered and thought I woke up to my alarm. Go downstairs and get ready for school. About halfway through my bowl of cereal, my sibling, Night Owl Who Games, comes downstairs to grab their laundry, and just stared at me wide-eyed sibling, what are you doing? Me, getting ready for school sibling, it's 1am to my dismay, I look at the clock, which very much says 1am. Definitely the most embarrassing and stupidest thing I've done. In middle school, my pen wasn't working, so I kept shaking it, but nothing happened. So since I suspected the ink chamber to be blocked off from the rest of the pen, I started fidgeting with it. Eventually, I forgot it was a pen, and sucked on the end of the pen, which I still thought was separate from the ink chamber. Mouth was navy blue until I got home. After drinking my whole water bottle. 
climbed a pine tree using aluminum gutter nails I hammered in as I went up. As I climbed the nails bent and I was unable to get down. I was about 50 feet up at this time and tried to bend the nails back up or hammer in new ones. Well, I tried sliding down but fell at about halfway. Thankfully this was a very swampy area of our yard and was soon after a rain, so I splashed into some deep mud and sank in deep enough to not die. I was a young and curious man. My sister started shaving her legs. I didn't have any pubic hair but I tested it out on my lip. For the rest of the day I had a cut that resembled Hitler's mustache. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe to never miss an upload.